A judge rules that Hunter Biden must answer questions about his financial dealings and his child support case and the roommate and survivor of the Idaho murder case now being asked to testify Two big legal cases making headlines this morning and trial attorney Karen Conti joining us to break it down. Good morning Tia. We want to start with Hunter Biden and what's happening in Arkansas with his daughter's mother. So he's trying to have his $20,000 per month child support reduced. The mom saying he's hiding documents. The judge criticized even his, his legal team for blacking out certain financial records. Karen, in what situation could you black out certain records and what kinds of documents do you have to produce in these kinds of cases? When a parent goes back to court to modify child support, your financial picture is just open to the public, right? So you have to produce tax returns, you have to produce checking statements for years, you have to produce all kinds of records that show what your actual income is. And, you know, people like to fight it, so they black out, they redact certain information that they think is private. And so, you know, there's always that tug of war, and that's what's going on here, Jan. He doesn't want certain documents to be, in certain information to be made public, and the judge says, no, it's relevant. So there's always that little dispute. So in what circumstance can something Thing become private because in this case the judges also demanded Hunter answer written questions about income he got from paintings he sold and some other business deals. It's standard. It's called interrogatory. So they have to, you know, every, even the mother has to answer interrogatories and produce documents because in, in Arkansas, both parties' uh, income is at issue. So you look at the mother's income and the father's income and you figure out what the child support is. So this is very typical and you're going to see these documents become public because when you are in court, that is a public, uh, you know, that's a public event and those documents, unless they're sealed by the judge for some reason, will become a uh, matter of public record. And interestingly, the mother also said she wants to have the four-year-old's last name changed to Biden, but if Hunter Biden disputes that request, what will the court do? He doesn't really have a right to do that. I mean, unless the name is not in the child's best interest, the mother has a right to ask that the that the name be be given. And you know, you can change your name to anything you want as long as it's not obscene. And in the case of a minor child, again, as long as it's not you know something that is going to harm the child, certainly the judge is going to rule in favor of that. I want to skip now to uh, the roommate of the four University of Idaho students uh, who were murdered. She's now being subpoenaed by the defense. So what does this tell you about what they're looking for? Does she have to cooperate? She does have to cooperate. She does. If she's subpoenaed, she's got to appear and she's got to tell the truth. It's got to be traumatic for her. I mean, she, you yeah. know, four of her roommates died and now the defense wants her to testify on, on his behalf. We don't really know exactly what evidence that they're trying to elicit from her, but my guess is that this roommate gave a timeline and gave her cell phone, and maybe maybe some of this timeline conflicts with the timeline that the prosecution is setting forth for the defendant. We're not going to really know until we see it, but but certainly she's going to have to cooperate. And 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 again, it may not be as relevant as the as you know the defense says, right, right. but but she's got to be there and do it. Uh, also, the parents of one of the victims. Uh, Ethan Chapin will not be in court for the legal proceedings. They say they don't want to focus on, on the negativity. Have you ever seen this before in, in your 36 years of being involved in these kinds of cases? It's more typical, Jan, where you see the parents go to every single court appearance. They go to the trial, they go to the sentencing, and they follow the appeals and they go to the parole hearings for years. And that's more typical because I think a lot of parents, you know, everyone grieves differently, but some parents really believe, I want to keep this guy in jail. He killed my loved one. And I understand that. On the other hand, there are certain families who just say, you know what, like this family, you know, it, I'm not going to get closure by going to these things. This guy will be put in jail or not put in jail, and we're going to celebrate my child's life by opening up a foundation or doing something else. So again, you know, you've got to give parents leeway to do whatever they want to, to try to get some sort of uh, feeling of closure here. Trial attorney Karen Conte, great talking to you this morning. Thanks for Take joining care. us.